we pride ourselves on being the most advanced generation in human history, but most of the knowledge and technology we have today originates from the ancient world. Among these, the Sumerians contributed innovations without which we wouldn't exist today. The Sumerians, one of the earliest ancient civilizations in the world, not only pioneered the first writing system, but also left behind legacies in agriculture, architecture, trade, and culture that continue to inspire and educate future generations. From vast fields teeming with wheat to bustling cities adorned with dazzling architectural marvels, the Sumerians created wonders and helped shape the world's civilization. Let's explore the uniqueness and advancements of these inventions together and understand their profound impact on our society and civilization today. The region of Mesopotamia, situated between the two great rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates, now within the territory of Iraq, is known for its flat terrain and warm climate, attracting the settlement of many tribes and peoples since ancient times. Among them, the Sumerians are regarded as the first to settle and develop civilization in Mesopotamia. Around 3500 BCE, the Sumerians devised the first writing system in human history, known as cuneiform or wedge-shaped script. This laid the foundation for the development of Mesopotamian civilization and played a crucial role in recording and transmitting knowledge and information across generations. The term cuneiform, derived from the Latin word cunucu, meaning wedge-shaped piece of wood, reflects the shape of the characters in this writing system, resembling wedge-shaped pieces of wood. Cuneiform was written using a stylus, a pointed tool made of bronze or wood, to make impressions on a soft clay tablet. Characters were formed by pressing the stylus into the clay, creating wedge-shaped impressions. One of the most important documents for understanding cuneiform in the Sumerian language is the lexical lists. These are tablets that record the characters and their corresponding sounds, facilitating the decoding of cuneiform texts. These lexical lists also provide us with a deeper insight into the language and culture of these Sumerians. Before the advent of cuneiform, the Sumerians used other forms to record information and knowledge. One of the earliest forms was the use of seals to mark clay tablets. However, this method could not represent abstract concepts and was unsuitable for writing complex texts. Subsequently, the Sumerians developed a system of classical cuneiform writing, used to record religious and legal texts. However, pre-classical cuneiform could not represent sounds and concepts, only simple words. One of the unique features of cuneiform is the intricate combination of images. By using pictorial characters, the Sumerians were able to represent abstract concepts such as humans, animals, or natural phenomena. This facilitated communication and the transmission of information. Moreover, cuneiform is highly flexible, allowing its use in various civilizations. Therefore, it was widely used in texts of different civilizations in Mesopotamia, including Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian, Elamite, Hatti, Hittite, Assyrian, and Hurrian. Until the late 19th century, cuneiform remained a mystery to humanity. All we knew about it was from copies made from ancient clay tablets. However, in 1857, the British archaeologist Henry Rawlinson successfully deciphered a cuneiform inscription from Mesopotamia called the Behistun inscription, consisting of over 200 lines. This was a crucial first step in deciphering cuneiform. Thanks to the decipherment of cuneiform, we can understand more about the history and culture of humanity. Cuneiform texts have provided us with information about the lives, religions, laws, and many other aspects of ancient civilizations. This has given us a deeper understanding of the past and the development of humanity. Furthermore, cuneiform is also used in archaeology and the reconstruction of ancient sites. Understanding the meaning of cuneiform characters has enabled us to read and understand texts on ancient clay tablets thereby uncovering important information about the lives of people living thousands of years ago. In terms of mathematics, 
The Sumerians developed a sophisticated system of measurement around 4000 BCE. This advanced system led to the emergence of arithmetic, geometry, and algebra. From around 2600 BCE onwards, the Sumerians inscribed numerous multiplication tables on clay tablets and were capable of solving geometric and division problems. The earliest traces of Babylonian numerals also date back to this period. The period from around 2700-2300 BCE saw the first appearance of multiplication tables, with a table consisting of continuous columns distinguishing the continuous orders of magnitude of the sexagesimal number system. The Sumerians were the first to use a positional value system. There is also evidence from myths that the Sumerians may have used a sliding ruler in astronomical calculations. They were the first to calculate the area of a triangle and the volume of a cylinder. One of the ancient Sumerians on inventions, from the third millennium BCE that is still applied today, is the sexagesimal system, base 60 counting system, which takes 60 as its base. And this counting system forms the basis of how we measure time, minutes, and seconds. The Sumerians initially chose the number 60 because it is easily divisible. There are only a few numbers that 60 and its multiples do not divide evenly, with the remainder being a non-repeating decimal, e.g. 133-333, as concept that the Sumerians could not deal with at the time. The land of the Sumerians was conquered by the Akkadians around 2100 BCA, followed by the Amoritas, also known as the Babylonians, around 1800 BCA. Ichukipuno power also applied a simple sexagesimal counting system and incorporated it into their own mathematics. The concept of dividing time into 60 units persisted and spread eastward to Persia, India, China, as well as westward to Egypt, Carthage, and Rome. This counting system was better adjusted after the Chinese discovered the 12-hour astronomical observation of stars, a discovery primarily due to the fact that most people lived according to the sun. It was also used in military contexts, especially in dividing night watches into equal parts. The Egyptians maintained three watches per night, while the Romans had four. With the innovations of the Greeks and Muslims in geometry, it was discovered that 360 was not only used to measure the ideal orbit time of the Earth, but also was an excellent number for measuring circles. This sexagesimal system began to solidify its position in history when it became essential for mathematics and navigation, the Earth was divided into longitudes and latitudes. Finally, with the emergence of clocks in the 14th century, its circular representation was divided into four quadrants. An hour was 60 minutes, and each minute was 60 seconds. Also, thanks to the base 60, a circle was divided into 360 degrees. It is entirely accurate to assert that ancient Sumerians were the inventors of mathematics. In ancient Sumerian society, like in most civilizations at the time, illness was considered a punishment from the gods, and to treat it, prayers and sacrifices were made. However, the tools they used to perform these rituals were often medicinal in nature. Physicians were placed in the most respected and educated class in their civilization. They underwent extensive training, often associated with the temples of healing. Physicians were divided into two main types, the Asu and the Ashipu. The Asu practiced therapeutic medicine, including treatment with herbs and surgery. In contrast, the Ashipu treated based on supernatural phenomena such as divination and superstition. According to the Code of Hammurabi, the Ashipu was further divided into Baru, seers, who had the ability to predict diseases, and Ashipu, who used incantations to ward off evil spirits and communicate with gods. While both types of physicians coexisted during that time, there seems to have been little competition between them. Even when the king fell ill, the opinions of both types of physicians would be consulted, although modern scholars sometimes refer to the Ishipu as a witch doctor and the Asu as a medical doctor. Ancient Sumerians held both in equal regard. 
There is no indication in ancient texts that one approach was considered more legitimate than the other. In fact, both types of physicians seem to be equally legitimate. The significant difference between them was that the Ashipu relied on incantations and prayers, while the Asu dealt directly with oils and herbal remedies. However, both types of physicians accepted supernatural causes of illness, and the Asu should not be considered more modern than the Ashipu. All illnesses were believed to be caused by gods or demons. Therefore, it was essential to appease the gods and demons through proper worship and wearing appropriate amuletes. Forbidden acts had to be acknowledged and respected. Diseases were brought out about as a punishment for offenses against the gods. But even without wrongdoing, illness could still be caused by demons. Demons could attack when the patient was careless, meaning they did not recognize the signs of illness in daily life. Or they could attack through sorcerer who could cast spells allowing demons to invade the body. Moreover, demons could infect others. So those afflicted with illness were ostracized and had to keep away. Different gods and demons caused different diseases and attention was paid to signs, including celestial phenomena, dreams, observation of flickering flames, the spreading of oil drops on water, the presence of animals or colors, etc., to identify the cause and prognosis of the disease. They had little significant knowledge of anatomy or physiology, and dissection of humans or animals for scientific reasons was not performed. However, they made efforts to study the organs and functions of domesticated animals, such as livestock, to understand anatomy and how each organ worked, to provide them with knowledge of what could be done to improve their medical practice. Not Asu and Ashipu often visited patients' homes to give advice on proper management. They noted significant signs along the way and in the patient's room, but also paid attention to the patient's condition and symptoms, systematically from head to toe. Overall, the conditions were generally vague, and identification relied mainly on divination, omens, dreams, etc., but also on direct observation. Diseases were monitored daily, and simple prognoses were made. When diagnosing, it was crucial to accurately determine which demon caused this disease, as well as why the demon acted. This directly affected the prognosis of the disease. The main purpose of treatment was to remove the demon or evil spirit causing the illness, or to appease the angry gods. After identifying the cause through divination, rituals such as incantations and wearing amulets were performed. If it was due to a demon, the Ashipu would exercise it. Herbal treatment options would be prescribed with a variety of medicines. According to ancient texts found, the main medicinal materials of Sumerian physicians were herbs, minerals, and salts. They often ground them and mixed them with water, beer, wine, or honey to help the patient swallow. Furthermore, Sumerian physicians emphasized cleanliness. They always advised patients on personal hygiene, regular living conditions, and never forgot to wash their hands before examining patients or performing minor surgeries. Surprisingly, Sumerian surgery was quite advanced. They knew how to use a reed to deal with fluid and urinary tract problems. A piece of clay was found that described the process of draining excess fluid from the liver by making an incision between the third and fourth ribs. Another piece instructed drilling the skull to relieve pressure. In Sumerian society, physicians were highly respected. In return, they were very responsible and willing to take responsibility for negligence. Today, all doctors are familiar with the Hippocratic Oath Interestingly, the principles in this oath all originate from Sumerian laws and medical practices. The Sumerians began practicing agriculture around 5,000, 4,500 BCE, implementing basic agricultural techniques such as organized irrigation, large-scale cultivation, specialized farming with the use of plows, and employing professional labor overseen by officials. The need for management in agricultural activities led to the development of writing around 3500 BCE. During the early Uruk period, primitive pictographs show that sheep, goats, cattle, and pigs were domesticated. They used oxen for heavy labor and donkeys as the primary means of transportation, 
while clothing and blankets made of wool or animal hair. Beside the house was a fenced garden for growing trees and other plants. Barley and possibly other grains were sown in fields, and the Shadoff water lifting device was used for irrigation. Plants were also grown in pots or troughs. They cultivated barley, lentils, peas, emmer wheat, barley, leeks, onions, garlic, spinacas, and dates. The Sumerians caught various types of fish, hunted game, and domesticated fowl. Uh, the Sumerians were one of the first societies to consume beer. Abundant cereal grains were the main ingredients for early beers. They brewed various types of beer from barley, emmer wheat, and mixed cereals. Brewing beer was an important activity for the Sumerians. In the epic of Gilgamesh, Enkidu became acquainted with food and beer from Gilgamesh's people. He drank beer as it was the custom of the land. He drank seven cups of beer. Then he became lively and sang happily. Sumerian agriculture relied heavily on irrigation. Irrigation was carried out using shadufs, water lifting devices, canals, ditches, dugouts, dams, and reservoirs. The frequent floods of the Tigris River, and less frequently, of the Euphrates River, necessitated regular maintenance of the canals to dredge silt and replace stakes. Stone revetments. The government required citizens to perform labor on the canals, although the wealthy could pay to be exempted from this obligation. As known from the Sumerian farmer's almanac, after the floods during the spring equinox in Akitu, New Year festival, farmers would dam water from the canal to flood the fields and then drain it. They would then use oxen to tread the fields and weed, using a hoe to till the soil. After drying, they plowed, harrowed, and hoed, breaking up clods with a hoe before sowing seeds. They even knew how to attach seed pouches to the plow to reduce the labor of sowing seeds. Unfortunately, the high rate of water evaporation led to increasing salinization of the soil. By the Ur III period, the people had transitioned from barley to barley, a salt-tolerant crop as the primary cereal crop. The Sumerians harvested in the spring, a team of three people consisting of one reaper, one binder, and one gleaner. The farmers would then use an ox-drawn threshing machine to separate the grain from the straw, and then use a cart to grind the grain. To separate the grains from the husks, they winnowed the mixture to separate the grain and chaff. What do you think of these great inventions? Were the Sumerians perhaps the most intelligent ancient people? Please leave your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe too. Join me on further exploration of this ancient journey. Thank you for your attention.